So good to have a brand new church member here tonight, little Jeremy Bass, sitting way back here. Jackie, it, can you, is he asleep? I don't want to, he's asleep, okay. But uh, you get an opportunity, congratulate uh, Carmen and Jackie, uh, a, a beautiful baby boy. And uh, I, I thought, Carmen, when I was messing with him back there, and thinking, I thought, I used to do Carmen like that. Tell him my age. Uh, <laughs> Turn with me in your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. And then 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. As we talk about destiny, purpose, and God's plan for our life. And tonight, I want to talk about the importance of you and I discovering our purpose and our destiny. The Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, set you apart. I ordained you a prophet to the nations, had plans for you. You didn't know what you were going to be, but I knew what I had called you to be. And then 1 Peter 2, 9, but you're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous night. Tonight, we're asking God to just do a great work. I don't know how your week's been this week, but I buried a dear friend yesterday, and a uh, uh, friend for over 30 years. Got a call before I come to church. One of my other buddies, was Bush Hogg, fell off the tractor, landed in the Bush Hogg, and was killed instantly, cut him up. They picked him up in pieces. So it's been a rough week for me, but God is still good. And I want us to know that life is uncertain and life is unpredictable, but God is our anchor that we can hold on to. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight would you speak to us through your word, that your word would become a living force, a dynamic force, an amazing force that would charge, challenge, awaken, that would feed us, that we would leave here tonight nourished by the word of God. That, Lord, the Bible tells us we're overcome the devil by the word. Therefore, Lord, let that word get in us to help us fight every situation that the enemy throws in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Life is full of uncertainty. Life is full of questions. Why was I born? Why was I born at this time? Why wasn't I born 100 years before or 100 years later? What is my purpose in life? What's God's will for me and what's the plan for my life? So many people go through life unhappy and restless and never content because they never find the answer to these questions. Many Christians live their entire Christian life limited, not really knowing what God's plan is. So they never experience the peace and the rest that God has for those that are walking in his will. And, and so they never achieve uh, any, any success in life or, or, or they never walk in the abundant life. God has a destiny and a plan for us and that is our plan and our desire and our focus is to find out that plan find that purpose and then walk in it somebody say amen he preordained and predestined that we have purpose and, des and, and destiny he wants to order our footsteps he wants to direct our path he wants to be involved in every moment of our life and that's where we miss it because we think God is only concerned about us being in church. But church prepares us to meet the world. And God wants to be involved in everything about us. He wants to lead us by his will. He wants us to walk in an abundant life. And God created us for purpose. It's important to find that purpose and walk in it. Now, hell's number one objective is to distort God's purpose for your life. And I hate to say it, he's done a tremendous job. He's got people sidetracked and shipwrecked and, and messed up and off course. And they're spending their time spinning wheels on stuff that really in the light of eternity does not mean anything. We're wasting our whole life over stuff that doesn't really mean anything. Only eternal stuff really means anything. It's very important to discover that purpose. Life is precious. The Bible says life is like a vapor. It appears for a little while and vanishes away. It's brief. It's so important not to waste it. Because only what you do for Christ, listen now, only what you do for Christ matters. That's the only thing that will last. 
Whoa, it's the only thing that means anything. So our desire or our purpose should be lay up our treasures in that home up above. Make heavenly investments, and everything you do, that's what we should have in mind. We should live every day and every moment maximizing our potential and living life to its fullest. It's important to discover our destiny and our purpose that God has planned out for us. And it's important that you and I, listen, you and I live it and do it. Have you ever gone by a graveyard and looked at the tombstones? Engraved in that stone is the name of the person who is buried there. Sometimes it's a brief message like loving father or mother or faithful husband, etc. But everyone I've ever seen had the date of birth and then the dash and the date of death. Birth, dash, death. Sounds brief. That sums up most people's lives. Are you ready? Birth, dash, death. Say it again. Birth, dash, death. Sums it all up. That's your life. And the question is, what are you doing with your dash? What are you doing from the time you're birthed until you die? This is so important that you discover what God has planned for you and follow his footsteps in the path he would have us to go because life would try to do everything to sidetrack us. Simply existing is not good enough. Simply getting by. If your life is just getting by, you need a change of purpose in your life. I don't care how young. I don't care how old. God has divine purpose for us in that stage and phase of your life. Somebody said, I'm not as young as I used to be. That does not mean you still don't have purpose and destiny. It changes and it goes from phase to phase to phase. But I'm telling you, God's hand is still on you. It's no time to retire. It's time to refire. Amen. Uh, everyone here tonight, if we will be honest, would like to have a do-over in our life. Amen? I'd like to do some things different than I did them growing up. Because I've learned from my mistakes and realized what's really important in life. You waste so much time on stuff, man, that's not important. Stupid stuff. Crazy, foolish stuff. Like drunk men and women, we just living our life carelessly and haphazardly, riding down the road of life and, and running in ditches and getting all messed up. And, and so we try to share this with our young people. And they think we're old-fashioned. And they think we don't know what we're talking about. And when you get our age, you'll realize how smart we were. we just hard-headed. Amen. Let me describe it like this. God's purpose, God's plan, would be the main road of your life. It would be like if you were going to Raleigh tonight, you would go out from the church, you would go right up here and hit number one south and head straight to Raleigh. How many know if you stay on number one, they'll take you right to Raleigh? How many did it many times? And so it's the easiest route. It's a straight route. It, it, you will arrive there. Things will be smooth most of the time. Uh, everything will be fine. That's how you travel when you discover your destiny. If you get on the main road of life, you go from point A to point B. But now some people, they will go out of here, and they got a better way. And they have a shorter way, and they have a more convenient, and they'll turn on a side road. And, 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 you know, that's what I want to choke the GPS sometimes because this GPS is a know-it-all. That's my wife. I talk back to mine. She, know, she got to know my voice. When she said, I said, you're crazy. One time, Joyce and I were going to Cary to see Heather, and, and, and I was listening to the, to the uh, uh, GPS. It said, turn right off, off of 70. I turned right off to 70. It said, turn left. I turned left. Took me down a little dead end, a little, little path road, and on, and on, and on, and on, and on. I said, what in the world's going on? And then it said, turn left. And then it says, turn right. And I was right back on 70. Some people's life, their destiny, their purpose is live like that. 
They go down side roads. They go down streets they have no business being on. They, they face all kinds of difficulty. And they come out on the other side. But they come out with all kinds of problems. And, and, and it takes longer. And it wears you down. Now, some people will leave here. And they'll go to the side roads to go to Raleigh. They'll get off the main road and, and, and take side roads and travel for a while. And go down another road then another one in the process of traveling. Sometimes they'll get lost and, and they'll give out of gas or they'll be out of money or the car will break down or they're running a ditch and they get a flat and they have to fix it. And finally, they keep on all this mess and finally get to Raleigh. When all they had to do, am I preaching? All they had to do was get on number one and point that car south and go straight in. Well, let me tell you something tonight. It ain't no big thing if you just get on the main road of God and say, I'm going to follow the Lord straight to where he's leading me. Get off the side road. Get off the paths and get on the main road. Amen. You need to quit spending your time down side roads. I remember Brother Benny Jones years ago told me this. and His first wife, and he traveled a lot evangelizing. And he said uh, he got so sleepy one night because Benny will get in the car and drive for hours. And him and Linda were going down the road. And he got so sleepy. He said, Linda, I'm going to pull over. I'm going to let you drive because we're on a main road. And all you got to do is keep straight and we'll get where we're going. I'm going to take a nap. He said he went to sleep and in about an hour, boom, he was bouncing all over the seat. He said she had come on a side road, a, 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 a dirt path with holes and cows in the pasture. And he said, what in the world did you do? She said, well, I just kept straight. The road kept straight. A bend, in, a bend in the road keeps straight. She just kept straight on a dirt path. And, and he said, man, it was a mess. And then I never ever got out of there. Can I tell you, your life will be a mess if you get off the main road. I want in the last days especially, God keep me on the main road. Hallelujah. Let me ask you something. Do you know your purpose? Think about this. What if you did not know the purpose of your automobile? I mean, what if it just was strange to you? I mean, suppose you went down and tried to cut your grass with your automobile. I mean, it's silly. Your car, your automobile, it's nothing unless you know what it's for. The automobiles get you from point A to point B. But if you don't know what it's for and you don't know how to operate it, you know what to do? You go to, you can wash it, you can wax it, you can move into it, you can eat supper in it, you can dress in it, but it will sit right there and you will never go anywhere. Well, when you don't know your purpose, you're going around in a circle. And you're not doing anything for God or good getting anywhere. I don't want to stay in the same place. I believe God is calling us forward. Amen. So it is, it, it, we got to know our purpose. When we will acknowledge of our creator's purpose. It brings us uh, into a world of hurt and pain. But when you know your purpose, it is smoother. It's more effective. Uh, it's easier. And somebody said, serving God is hard. Hey, I'll tell you what makes it hard is when you get out off the main road. And, 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 and you know the difference in a preacher and a drug addict? The preacher has found his purpose. And the drug addict does not know his purpose. He is listening to the devil saying, you got to get a high. you got to escape reality. you you got to have this fix. But the preacher has said, hey, you know something? God saved me to help somebody down the road. I know what I'm doing. I may not be a, the greatest preacher. I may not be the most intelligent preacher. But God called me, and i got a place and a purpose to do something for God. You know the difference in the man who brings his children and his family to church and loves his wife and provides and the man that abuses and is drunkard and, and abuses his family? The man that takes care of his family has found purpose. And purpose is about finding purpose is about doing what is right. Purpose is powerful. One of the things that sidetracks people's purpose is they look for it in the wrong places. They look for it in their, themselves in their feelings, in their desires, in their wants, and in the world. And this misdirects their purpose. 
and sends them down these side roads. Now, I believe this. You agree with me or not? I believe every talented singer, whether it be rock music, country music, pop music, well, I believe they were given that talent by God to glorify God. I believe they are prostituting their talent to the devil. I believe everyone with that kind of talent ought to be behind a pulpit or in a church or in an auditorium lifting people to Jesus Christ. You know how I know that? Listen, you know why Elvis Presley was so tormented? He could not even sleep without pumping himself full of pills and drugs and having a gospel group come sing to him. People like Kurt Cobain that took a shotgun and blowed his head off. It was because he was walking out of purpose. People like Whitney Houston that God had called to, to, from the early childhood to sing in church and had got off beat. I'm telling you, God's purpose for our talent is to be used for him. I don't care what you're good at. You need to use it for the Lord. They took their talents and they put it in the hands of flesh. And it drove them to drugs and alcohol and and death and suicide, all kinds of pain. That's because they went down, they chose to go down the side road. God's will is that we win many souls in what we do. Have you ever met some people that are talkers? They got what I call the gift of gab. Now, now many of you won't understand this name, but because uh, it's been probably 20 years since, I don't think he's ever been in new churches at all. Delbert Garrison, an evangelist. I hadn't seen him in probably 20, 22 years. And uh, Delbert was an energetic little guy, skinny little. And today I'm, I'm down at my barn and, and somebody pulls up. And here's the way he pulls up. Why is there my daughter? I said, who in the world is this cat? He sees me. He drives across my grass. Drives down. Drive. I said, somebody's mad or something. And he gets out. And he said, you know who you look like? And I said, what? I mean, I, knew, I said, what? I, he entered, he just bounces out. And, and he got talking. And I said, I know who you are. And I hugged his neck. And, and uh, 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 I thought, man, I hadn't seen you in years and years. But, but, but he dr drives like a maniac. And, and, and when he left my barn, he took a boom. And some people, their life is like that. It's, 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 it's their go, 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 their energy. But what you need to do is bottle that energy and use it as a witness and a testimony and, and, and talk to somebody about the Lord. And invest in God's work and in God's uh, business and in what God's called you to do. Use that energy because there's going to come a day you're not going to have as much energy as you used to have. Amen. If we'll discover God's purpose and the gifts that God's given us. See, in, in the Bible, one man was given five talents. One, two, and one was one talent. A man with five talents, man, he just went and doubled. Two talents, double. One guy said, mm, man, I, I better bury this thing. I don't want to lose it. I want to hold it. And when the Lord of that house came back, he, he blessed the one with five that had gotten ten. And the one with two that got involved. And he took that one away from the one that buried it. He said, you should have done something with what I give you. Now, now this is a challenge to all of us. I, not everybody's called to preach behind the pulpit. Not everybody's called to do something. But you can do something. Come on now. I don't want to make you mad, but I might as well go ahead and say it. Because we can buy mannequins. To sit on the pew. <laughs> Crash dummies. To sit on the pew. I can get me a string or a button and tie something to it. Everybody can do something. So when we come to church tonight. Everybody has a role to play in this service. 
No need to go away and say, well, nothing going on. Everybody has a, whether it's raising your hand, praising the Lord, praying for somebody, doing something, hollering hallelujah. Everybody has purpose to make the church service dynamic, awesome, and bring in the presence of God where miracle signs and wonders can happen. All of us are involved. Did you, and you never know what your little bit can do. Anybody ever see the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, starring Jimmy Stewart? All of us have seen that. He was a man who put his personal dreams on hold to help others in the community. He sowed into their life, became a major part of his community, touching the lives of many, making a difference in their life. But he went to a period of a time that he wanted to die. And he said, I hate I was ever born. And so an angel shows up and shows him how his life would be, how life would have been without him. And he takes him to his wife where he had married. And, and because he didn't marry her, she was an old maid. And, 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 and he, his brother was drowned and dead because he wasn't there to pull him out of the pond. And the whole town was different, even a different name, because he was not there to influence it. It was an entirely different world without one person. Now, now let's break it down a little, little person. What kind of family would your family be without you? You are a major player in your family. You are the husband, the wife, the son, the daughter. Maybe you're the little baby eating or drinking milk, but you are a major part of that family, and you're connected, and you're touched by one another. And I don't care how many children you have, if one dies, it, it, it hurts. It's brokenness. Everybody has place, power, purpose. And without it, there is a void there. And so every one of us have eternal purpose here. And our purpose is connected to other people, whether we're preaching behind the pulpit or, or, or uh, I, I was amazed yesterday. I, I went to, to the funeral in, in, in Chase City. I did not know 90% of the people. I was telling Joyce, the pulpit looked like a rocket. It was up on a, it was a round wooden stand up on a pedestal. You had to go around, climb up there, and you look down at people. And, uh, but, but I knew that I had touched that family's life. I knew I had touched that man's life that we buried. And, 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 and my prayer is that maybe he's, he's in heaven because maybe I touched him in a small way. And that's our desire. I, I, I never preached him a message. See, see some of these guys, I, I never preached him a message. I just showed them Jesus. I show them the light, and, and that's what you do. The person you work with, you don't have to quote scripture. You don't have to preach your message. You, all you do is be real before them. That's touching them. I'm going to read this. I'm going to close. There's a song years ago that a guy used to sing named Ray Bolts, and I believe I used this at Sister Hunt's funeral. Many of you remember Sister Hunt, what an amazing woman. And listen to the words. I dream I went to heaven. And you were there with me. We walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. We heard those angels singing. Then somebody called your name. You turned and saw this young man. He was smiling as he came. He said, friend, you may not know me. And then he said, but wait. You used to teach my Sunday school class when I was only eight. And every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. And one day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart, think about that. You Sunday school teachers, you children's workers, the number of kids that you think you're not reaching. Oh, wow. He says, thank you for giving to the Lord. Thank you for walking in purpose. Thank you for walking in destiny. I am a life that was changed. Because you walked in purpose. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm so glad you gave. Another man stood before me. He said, remember the time a missionary came to your church and his pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, 
but you gave a little anyway. Jesus took that gift you gave, and that's why I'm here today. So every time you sow in an offering or give in a missionary, I want to tell you, somebody around the world is being touched. It says, one by one they came, far as your eyes could see. Each life somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you had done, sacrifices you had made, oh, they were unnoticed on this earth. But in heaven, they now proclaim. And I know that up in heaven, you're not supposed to cry. But I'm almost sure there were tears in your eyes. Jesus took you by the hand. He stood before the Lord. He said, my child, look around you. For great is your reward. That is my desire. I hope that when, Wayne, when I get to heaven, I hope somebody will come running to me and say, Pastor, I was in a kid's jail, and I was in the nursery, and you came by, and you hugged on me, and you kissed on my forehead, and I realized that a pastor loves people. See, when I was growing up in church as a child, I was afraid of the preacher. He was the authority figure. I felt like I was in school at the principal's office. So I'd go back in the nursery, and I'd go back in the preschool, and toddlers, and kids jam, and even teenage, and I'll grab them. They'll run to me, and I'll have to peel them off. The other night, little John had some yellow paint, and it got on my coat. I said, don't worry about it. I want them to know I love them. And I believe this, because I've seen them born just like Carmen's new baby. No more Carmen was that age. Maybe Carmen's standing here tonight playing the guitar. Maybe I did a little something that showed in his life. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was you. Maybe something you did. And, and so... So I, I want, when I get to heaven, I want to see people to say, you made a difference. You helped me. Gilbert's sitting there tonight. He and I grew up together, teenage years, years that I don't like to remember or talk about. We, we were not angels. I'm sure Joe, somebody, but Gilbert and I used to date sisters. Remember that? <laughs> Whew, long time ago. But to have Gilbert in here as an usher saying, Pastor, Pastor, I thank my God. We grew up together. He respects me as a man of God. I've touched him. And Gilbert, you know the way we were raised, we ought to be in hell tonight. But God's done something. God's done something. And so this is what I close with. Please find your purpose. And, and impact somebody's life. Nothing major, nothing big. Like I say, it may be going back to that nursery and hugging that little baby. It may be going back, Edgar, to the kids' jam and say, hey, kids, and loving them and say, we love you, giving them a piece of candy. I, I'm, win, I'm working on Bo. I'm winning Bo. Bo loves cakes. And because of this COVID, we haven't been around much, but I'm working on him. So, uh, if I say, he'll, he'll be whining and I'll be trying to mess with him, he'll look at me and I'll say, want a cake? I got him. I close with this. Remember, all of our lives, we are connected to somebody. Make a difference.